Hey guys, great crowd. Sorry the room's so small, but we're glad you're here. Um, I have a very esteemed panel here. Um, may I please introduce the commissioners, Mignon Clyburn, Michael O'Reilly, Ajit Pai. We are so glad you've joined us here at CTIA. It's been a great convention, and it's just about to get greater, isn't it, everybody? Um, so, in keeping with my wanting to play game, um, we've got, we're going to play Truth or Dare today. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to play the same game. And just also... <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and Give again, <laughs> um, it, it's kind of just like the same old panel, only there are no prizes. Huh. There are door prizes? No, there I wish none. there were. Oh. They told me we couldn't, but I really wanted puppies was actually what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're no Jimmy Fallon, in, apparently. Now, once we started, um, the first year we did this, we did ge Geographic went first. And then last year we did Seniority first. So this year we're going to go seniority backwards. So guess who gets to go first? All right. Commissioner O'Reilly. So we have, for those of you who are new to our game, we have a phone with different topics on it. And as they go, then they get to pick which topic they want the question on. And I've got the secret questions. All right, so Commissioner O'Reilly, you are up. Oh, sure. I'm sorry, we're being rude. Are y'all no, cheating? No, are we're, cheating? We're, we're just talking over here. <laughs> Solving some problems? Exactly. Uh, how about I start with, we'll just start up in the corner there. LTE and unlicensed. LTE and unlicensed. Okay, is everybody ready? So you guys get a cheer or jeer? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. This, this game show is taking a whole nother level here <laughs> amongst some very good friends in the audience, right? But we regulate them at least. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, we love Wi-Fi and we rely on it every day, just like we do LTE. Companies are ready to deploy new LTE technology in unlicensed bands to provide consumers exciting new services. Yet, the cable industry is trying to block and delay LTE and unlicensed, despite the fact that the hallmark of unlicensed spectrum is that it is a sandbox for permissionless innovation. How do we move beyond these delaying techniques and roll out new services to consumers? I guess I should have read that before I picked it, huh? <laughs> uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you for having me. I'm very pleased to be here. I flew in this morning. Um, I have a head cold, so if I say something screwy, that's what I'm blaming it on. Oh, that's why you put me by here. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I don't know if I agree with all the premises in, 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 your, in your setup, but, but I will answer it this way. I, I became, become extremely frustrated with where we are in the LTEU uh, process. Um, I've said this before, that it's one thing to seek a testing regime uh, for coexistence. It's another where uh, the delay becomes the, the only thing we're, we're, we're spending our time talking about. Um, it's, it's almost like a asking your, uh, the, you know, your, your uncle who's staying with you when you're going to leave. You know, we, we've, we've just, you know, it, it's, too, um, it, it's too amorphous. Uh, I don't think that we should be going on this far uh, and this long in terms of getting a process that we can facilitate LTEU operational. Um, we, I don't know that I want the commission involved per se, but we have to move past the, where the current roadblocks. Uh, delay for delay's sake is no longer acceptable, in my opinion, uh, and, and I just, I'm just i ready to, to um, help move forward. Audience, I think that deserves a cheer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, anybody else want to uh, add an answer to that? So I, I don't know if um, I'm being eternally optimistic or uh, trying to older I get. I'm the oldest one on the stage that's, that's saying, but I'm still good looking. <laughs> Thank you. That, deserves... <laughs> that was real cheap. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but, but look, I see some bright spots here. Um, I, I know you mentioned you don't know whether or not staff is going to be back. But staff is, is, is watching. Staff has attended uh, the first of four meetings. They will continue to do so. Um, you know, they, we have, um, there was an application, um, I think, just last week. Um, uh, you know, granted um, for uh, 
you know, you know, looking at um, you know some testing. Um, you know, of course, uh, an STA was granted some time ago uh, to Qualcomm. So I, I, I'm optimistic that all of the conversation and the uh, the observation, uh, you know, very hands-on, will move us into a, a direction where um, we will see uh, you know more movement. Uh, and so I, I, I am hopeful. I, uh, I'm mindful, um, but uh, you know, I remain hopeful that. Um, these coexistent workshops and uh, will, will, will bear some fruit in the not so distant future. Commissioner Pye, are you optimistic? <laughs> uh, I'm sort of neutral <laughs> right now, but uh, first I want to agree with what Commissioner Riley said. Thank you for having us. Thanks to all of you for, for coming. Uh, I, th I like the way Commissioner Riley framed the issue, and I would simply add to that, just taking it a step above. Remember, we're talking about the unlicensed bands here, and one of the things that allowed unlicensed spectrum to thrive is the fact that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Zigbee and these other protocols were allowed to, uh, to be experimented with without the government sort of standing as a gatekeeper. And that's one of the things I hope remains uh, in the f first and foremost in the minds of commissioners and FCC staff is that we need to make sure that there's all sorts of permissionless innovation that is, uh, that is pursued in these unlicensed bands. And I think LTEU is one example of that. And I've viewed it first and foremost as an engineering problem to solve, not as a sort of political or you know, policy. Uh, issue to be haggled uh, about in Washington. Absolutely, and we're optimistic on September 21st we'll have a plan for testing, so I think you're right. Yeah. Um, staying with you, because that was a good answer. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you get to go next. Ah, that's some reward. Uh, could I have, uh, let's see, <laughs> uh, 5G and IoT. 5G and IoT. Do y'all like this uh, little game here? I think it's even getting better. We, we, Almost professional here, how about it? All right, 5G and IoT. Oh, this is a good one, <laughs> if I say so myself. Uh, this summer's Spectrum Frontiers order was a critical first step for 5G. Thank you, guys. On behalf of the industry, all of us, everybody say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that was an enthusiastic applause if I <laughs> Man. Tough crowd, tough crowd. <laughs> in your mind, what should industry and the FCC do next to ensure we are the 5G global leader? Well, that's a great question. I mean, the challenge for industry, I think, is pretty substantial. I, as I talk to carriers and to others who have a stake in the 5G revolution, it's, it's a daunting challenge from a business perspective to think about you know, the spectrum challenges of 5G, the infrastructure demands. Uh, from a regulatory perspective, too, I think there are uh, some things that we need to do. And I sort of view it in those two different buckets, spectrum and infrastructure. I think with respect to spectrum, uh, one of the hallmarks of the agency at its best has been both the speed and the unanimity with which we approached uh, the spectrum frontiers proceeding. I think it spoke well of the agency that all of us came together with different ideas. Okay, what about this band? Can we push harder here? And ultimately, we came up with a product that gave industry not only the certainty that I think they need to be able to make these investment decisions and to pursue innovation, uh, but also the time time frame that will allow the United States, uh, from a pro an admittedly parochial perspective, uh, to take a worldwide leadership role in 5G. And I think that's something that is ultimately in the next half decade or decade really going to bear fruit, that you know, the cutting edge innovation is going to happen here in the United States. Uh, going forward, I don't think there's much more for us to do with respect to the, some of the spectrum bands. Uh, we teed up in a further notice uh, some of the bands that I talked about last year, and then I hope uh, industry will support us in moving forward on those. And on the infrastructure side, I think there's a lot for us to do as well. The challenges, as these folks know, uh, moving from the towers of old to the small cells and other smaller infrastructure of the future is going to be a major, major challenge. I mean, tens of thousands of deployments. And so we need to make sure, uh, from an FCC perspective, that we streamline the regulatory process as much as possible. I laid out a, in my very first speech, actually, at MobileCon in 2012, some ideas for doing that, and some of which we have adopted. But I think we need to do more to make sure that municipalities and others uh, don't stand in the way of these uh, quicker deployments. Here's an area where I think we can speak with a unified voice, and that could really help ease the business case for making this grand transition. Nine months in a 5-0 decision. It was pretty incredible. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else want to add to that? Well, I, I would agree with my colleague, uh, very, very much so on both points, both, both buckets as he called them. Uh, on Spectrum, I'm very pleased that we're going to um, look at additional bands. It was part of the, you know, uh, I was in Geneva when we did work, uh, and you saw what the rest of the world is planning to do, and it's a slowdown, and they're trying to prevent the United States from moving forward uh, in this front, and we're not going to wait for them. 
There are a number of countries, a handful, that are ready to, to move forward, and we're going to lead the charge. And so I'm pleased that we were able to work with, with uh, together on this front. We have a great deal to do on the infrastructure side. I know there's an infrastructure button or app or something to be had, so we'll get there a little bit more. Um, but I've been, you know, not only pushing this issue really hard, but also seeking input from those that are in the field on what best to, to what things we can do at the commission to be uh, helpful in this front. I, I've made clear in both at the commission and in testimony before Congress, it does come to the word that people don't like to talk about. It does get, at some point, we're going to have to preempt. Um, and we're going to, you know, authority provided from Congress to push um, localities to make the right decision. I mean, it comes down to whether you want the service that your consumers are begging for or you want to maintain artificial control. Uh, and I think it's the former, and we have to be supportive of that. Well, uh, again, from the half full, uh, if I can continue uh, this theme, uh, just looking at the floor during the, my tour uh, on uh, yesterday, my goodness, all the benefits of a more connected world, I, I mean, I just saw just in multiples uh, there. And um, when you mentioned the timetable, ta the quickness, and um, that uh, it was uh, 5 -0. we're all in. Uh, and, and we are committed uh, to stay, uh, not only to stay ahead uh, of the world, but to provide our citizens uh, what they deserve, what they expect um, you know, from regulators and um, uh, industry. And, uh, you, but there, as you mentioned, there are challenges ahead. We've got citing um, you know, issues with uh, municipalities, and we have to have more conversations. All of you have to, um, we have, to have uh, more robust conversations. It might take a longer period of time. Uh, to really say this is a win-win, you know, for communities, uh, for uh, companies, for you know, for all of us. Um, at the FCC, we have to be more flexible, you know, in terms of our, you know, uh, use policies. You know, more flexible, um, you know, use policies. That's got to be in place. That has to be. That has to be a part of our DNA. That has to define. Um, uh, so, and I think if you look at that, you know, the the issues and challenges when it comes to deployment. Um, the, the issues and challenges when it comes to cybersecurity, making sure it's at the front of the line. It, it, it's, it's first when we talk about that. Um, uh, because for all of us, it should be about narrowing the divide. And I think if we keep uh, our objectives um, you know, in, in front of us that um, you know, we'll get there, um, it's going to take some sweat equity, literally and figuratively. Uh, for us to get there, but um, I think the possibilities. We've got state partners, I believe I saw in the room, that will really, I think, um, we need to better leverage our partners, um, uh, potential partnerships, in order to get some of the state and local people. Um, well, I'm ready to leverage them. Well, let's go leverage. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a few in the room. Y'all hear that? Yeah. <laughs> we need to work together. Um, well, Commissioner Clyburn, why don't you go ahead and take the next one? Oh, well, uh, since this is a, a seemingly a perfect segue, let's talk about infrastructure a bit. All right. I think we're, we're on that topic. It's a good one. Um, mm -hmm. It really is something that we stress is really important as we move forward with 5G. Um, you see it on the floor everywhere, and it's going to require really dense networks. And when you think about these networks, you shouldn't really think of a 150-foot pole. You're going to think of a, a cell that's the size of a smoke alarm or a pizza box. Um, what do you think the, we've touched on this, but yeah. really what, what can we do we, as the FCC, what can we do as CTIA and the wireless community to make sure that the, the cost and the timing of these cell deployments are, are streamlined? Because I think that's really gonna have to happen for 5G to roll out. If there's a word of this session, I think it is streamlining, um, that the FCC must do um, what it can in order to, to make, to short circuit uh, whatever is preventing us from um, you know, keeping uh, moving ahead to the, you know, the front of the class. You talk about, you know, small cells. Or, you know, one of the things I'm proud that, that we did when we, we were talking about, um, you know, some of the, the entities dealing uh, with native lands and native, co you know, communities, we, we have an amendment in place um, for DAS and small cells uh, that, um, that I'm very proud that we, we uh, uh, that, that we instituted, you know, again, being a sensible um, a, a citing regulator, um, if I could kind of rename us a, a bit, I think from our perspective um, is very much uh, needed and continuing uh, to work, uh, you know, with entities and make sure that whatever are the, wherever the bottlenecks are, 
particularly, and I mean, citing might be the second word of the day. That, that's just really uh, critical. We have to be respective of, respectful of, of communities. You know, the, 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 not only you know, strictly the, the, the topography, but really the characteristics uh, you know, of the com community and neighborhoods. We have to maintain that. We can strike a balance um, with, uh, again, with a collaborative and uh, all hands on uh, framework that everybody is invested in this. And I think if we keep that in front of mind that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there. It's not gonna be in the timetable that we want. It's, maybe it's not gonna be as inexpensive through today's um, economic lenses, but I, I think we'll get there. Well, I, 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 I appreciate all those goes with good words. When we're talking about wireless fiber and what this possibly can be, um, I've suggested, and, and I'm open to, as I said before, different ideas. I've suggested the commission should consider being a roving, a roving fireman, that we ought to be willing to go to localities that are the problem areas and testify uh, and, and, and send our experts from the Bureau to them uh, and convince them otherwise, that, that they are, you know, if they're going to stand in the way of progress uh, for their citizens, we ought to you know, be in the record uh, arguing why they're wrong and, what, and, and show the numbers and, and be able to convince them otherwise and instead of just having it uh, as, as a big bad industry um, versus you know, local uh, con concerns because there is a, the benefit. Uh, we spend a great deal of our time and we work so closely together on trying to connect communities and making sure that everyone has as fast broadband as possible. Um, and so this is part of that equation in my, in my mind. And so we're going to have to, to look at new different ideas uh, to convince these, these uh, localities that they shouldn't be in the way. So you, when you talk about, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner, yeah. when you talk about, if you were in the mayor's panel on yesterday, you've got to recognize certain local realities. Number one, when you talk about elected officials, they're thinking about the next election. So you can't put them in a position to do anything that was gonna upset that. Secondly, when you talk about those who are responsible for community development and, and that um, you know, part of the portfolio, they need to see beyond the yearly or monthly cost of you know, um, you know, you know, treating like a small cell or a DAS, you know, the, the same way as you would a, a, something on a, you know, a, a large pole. You know. In order for them to, to get away from that quick dollar, you need to, the conversations need to include, we need to double down on including in that conversation that look at what this investment would mean to the community in terms of uh, the, the, the payout or the dividends that, um, and I respectfully, all of us in this room could do a better job of having those conversations at, at the state and local uh, uh, communities. They've got to see where the return on investment is going to be, and then and only then will that input um, probably be more will be more competitive. And that's and that's exactly what I'm talking about. So I think that's one part of it. But you know, I'm southern. I have to restate. Sure, sure, sure. Right. But I, I think part of that is you know some localities have been jacking up the cost of permits, because they see it as a monetary opportunity, and they can't just be the next election. They're trying to figure out how to make, balance their budgets off the backs of wireless users. So it's going to be a, you know, it's going to require a, a lot of effort, and I want to be part of that conversation. I just said, I like the way Commissioner Clyburn teed up a lot of these issues, and I think we have made a lot of progress. As she mentioned just last month, we had the amendment to the National Programmatic Agreement in 2014. We had a pretty comprehensive wireless infrastructure order that I think advanced the ball. Uh, but that said, as you pointed out, uh, we have a ways to go. And so uh, next Tuesday, I'm going to be laying out a bunch of specific ideas for promoting infrastructure uh, deployment uh, in Cincinnati. And, uh, but I think just a very brief preview is going to be uh, ways to make sure that wireless infrastructure is deployed quicker. One of the things I've talked about before, for example, is uh, having a deemed grant remedy uh, as a result of the violation of our shot clock. As I read the Supreme Court's decision in the city of Arlington, if, it seems to me that if we have the authority to institute the shot clock, we should have the authority to make sure that shot clock has some consequences for uh, not being abided by. And with respect to uh, the other parts, I think it's important to remember that 5G also, or infrastructure also requires uh, wireline infrastructure as well. And so we need to make sure that we have a regulatory system in place that will maximize the incentive of the private sector to deploy fiber. It's going to require a lot more fiber in a lot more places in order for us to have this densified network, which I'll, after all is going to require the high capacity circuits to carry a lot of that traffic. And so I'll be talking about a lot of specific ideas for promoting fiber as well, but it's all a critical part of the equation, I think. It is wise commissioners, all of them, aren't they? <laughs> um, 
I will say you might um, want to stop. We, we will be are, are you going on? <laughs> no, no, I was going to say we'll be working with all of you because I think this is so important for our our nation, our economy, and our future. So we are um, absolutely going to be working to develop a comprehensive infrastructure plan, and it it may take a little while, but we are this is this is critical for us all to work together on. So thank you for your comments. Um, who shall we pick next? So I'll go for the young Thanks. one. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's, yeah, let's go. We're We're back sure. All right. Uh, sure thing. How about um, free data? Oh. Ooh, love that one. Okay. Uh, mobile data usage more than doubled last year. Doubled. One of the ways carriers are responding is through new options, including rollover data and free data or zero rating offerings. These options have been enthusiastically received by consumers. How can we ensure that new innovative offerings are encouraged and avoid regulatory uncertainty? <laughs> so uh, first and foremost, I like the experimentation that uh, wireless providers are attempting to meet consumer demands and figure out what works in the marketplace, what doesn't, and they're constantly tinkering with their different offerings. So that's exciting to me and it's beneficial as a consumer myself. So I appreciate that. In terms of your, this, the, the heart of your question is what can we do um, the difficulty is that we've set up a stage, we set up the rules at the commission to do the opposite. It is to provide uncertainty. It is to leave carriers um, captured uh, in this world of un, uh, unclear what the, what, what the rules will be because we've just left it up to the bureaus to examine as they see fit. The chairman you know, says they're gonna be a ref and the, throw the flag on the, on, on, on the play, but we don't actually know what game they're playing and we don't know what their de determinations are. I've reached out to the bureaus and tried to uh, get a determination on who they're meeting with, when they're gonna conclude, where, you know, where our carrier is actually going to get a letter of, of a star, you know, gold star on top of it, or how's this going to work? And we don't really get any answers from that. And, and that's not uh, unsurprising because it's what Commissioner Commissioner Pai and I expected when we, we did the uh, the item that we, we don't need to talk about, but um, that, that, it's called that, Voldemort. It, it, it just it, it has led us to this certain place that's problematic, uh, and, and I know in talking to carriers uh, that they are some are withholding certain things because they're afraid of what the commission may do. Um, and they're, you know, and you saw this in some of the comments yesterday from, from folks at the commission. So I think that's problematic. I think we should end that practice. Uh, we should end that uncertainty um, and, and let carriers experiment um, and, and try out what works for consumers uh, and see as the, as the market goes forward. So you knew the honeymoon was gonna end soon, right? <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. I, I um, tried to say, say, say this. I, I didn't this hear point. you. I said it. It's definitely over. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so as, as a person that if, if you want to um, either place blame or say who's at fault, I'll, I'll take the hit on this one. Um, when it uh, comes to you know, sponsored data or zero rated plans, um, I did get uh, some of my um, uh, closest friends a bit upset with me because I would not outright agree to just a ban um, you know, this particular practice because I thought um, if uh, it done appropriately um, with all of the innovation that, uh, you know, we see and, and we know um, uh, to expect from those of you in this room that actually these could provide some incredible value-added experiences for those no matter where you are on the economic spectrum, meaning if you are a lifeline, very limited um, uh, data voice customer, that if the provider has some type of plan that you could have a, 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 not, um, a, a relationship with your uh, doctor without uh, impacting your minutes um, or, or your data, that you can get text alerts. You know, you got text for babies and other um, types of examples that, to me, I would consider sort of a sponsored data uh, plan that's not gonna count against those minutes. Uh, that, that is a value added in a, a, a product offering or a series of product offerings that would be beneficial to the ecosystem and to uh, the individual consumer. So yes, I will agree up to a point um, that the, um, this is something that the FCC um, has said, you know, we're gonna look at things on a case-by-case -case basis. We know we have to set up some parameters. That makes sense. But to make one call or another at this time where I think, I don't use this word often, that things are pretty nascent um, at, at this point, 
I, I really thought was premature. And the honeymoon is still over, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, I actually say thank you. I didn't, I didn't know that the option of banning it altogether was even contemplated. Oh, yes, I'll, well, I, I sure. should have assumed, but I, I did. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could take that so many ways, but I won't. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll just add that, look, in a highly competitive marketplace, uh, I think wireless providers should be allowed to differentiate themselves with a variety of business plans that ultimately end up benefiting consumers. And so in this regard, I agree 100% with Chairman Wheeler when he said, with respect to T-Mobile's Ben John in particular, it's highly competitive and highly innovative. And it seems to me in that kind of uh, context, the last thing the government should be doing is standing in between a service provider and a consumer who would benefit. Thank you, we appreciate that. Uh, it's a competitive industry. These guys are competing their brains out, as you can see from their ads and their tweets, and the consumers are benefiting. So with that comment, why don't we, uh, Commissioner Pye, why don't you choose? Uh, well, since we're talking about competition, how about competition? Competition. Are you gonna do the elbow thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah, seesaw. The seesaw? Um, yeah. seesaw, yeah. Wireless ca carriers, as I just mentioned, are competing every day to retain and win new cons customers. How does the commission weigh today's competitive offerings when it looks at wireless regulation? Well, those, I, I would divide it into two questions. How does the commission view these things and how should the commission view these things? How does the commission view it? I think it's telling that repeatedly over the last several years, the commission has refused to find that the wireless marketplace is competitive. And I think that would be news to most of the people in this room and virtually any sentient being who's watched TV or listened to the radio recently who's always getting a pitch for this or that new benefit from this or that company looking to get an edge in the marketplace. And so it seems to me in the United States, look, 99% of Americans have access to 4G LTE. 97% have the ability to get th uh, service from three or more providers. Uh, we have 160 facilities-based providers in this country. The, the price of data has just dramatically decreased. Something like nine times as much data can be accessed now at the same price as you could have gotten four years ago. I mean, this is a marketplace that is competitive and heading in the right direction, a b direction that benefits consumers. And so it seems to me, if I were in the driver's seat, what I would say is, look, this is a competitive marketplace, and the last thing we want to do is disrupt the regulatory framework that since 1993 has given us the wireless marketplace that is the envy of the world. Now, how will the commission ultimately recognize this? I certainly hope it does, but you know, they're obviously disturbing uh, importance on, on in the future. And I think the most fundamental one is not recognizing that the wireless industry is different, that uh, you know, wireless providers have a variety of network and business challenges that are unique, and uh, they shouldn't be lumped in with uh, everybody else necessarily. So I'm filing for separation from him too. So. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going all Taylor Swift and Tom <laughs> Jim Hills. No, it's on? Vegas. You can do that <laughs> multiple times, right? Um, nice. So it's in the details. It's in the you know it's in the footnotes to me. So you know I look at this when you say competition. You know I chuckle a bit because um, I another if you'll allow an amendment amendment to that consolidation, and you and I all of us know that the ecosystem has become more consolidated. You know, in 2003, if you can remember back then, there were six national carrier to, carriers, um, and, and you know, 97% of the mar market um, you know, had you know, three or more providers. Uh, you, you could choose from three or more providers. Fast forward to 2014. Now you have um, four uh, that we identify as national carriers, and the figures that I'm quoting, um, that um, fewer than 50% of, of those, particularly in um, certain areas, um, in, in rural areas, have um, three or more uh, carriers to choose from. So we, we can you know, do a tug of war in terms of, uh, oh, it's not war, just a tug, um, on uh, you know, whether or not um, you, you know, things are competitive uh, or not. I say if you get more granular, go market by market, it does not, um, it, it, from where I said, it does not appear to be as competitive as um, my colleague seems to think. But that's my perspective. Well, gosh, um, I, I may agree more with Commissioner Pai on this one. Uh, I, I, uh, sorry. 
Uh, what a great <laughs> independent thinker he is. So um, very objective. I, I love I, that. That's fantastic. I, I'm, I'm at, a, uh, at a loss when how the Oh, he's got a head cold, so. Yeah, I, I, I'm at a loss <laughs> <laughs> how the commission um, looks at this issue. Um, they, they see the marketplace and they see it's got problems. They, you know, consolidation, I, I've only been at the commission for a little bit of time, but the commission's voted on a lot of these uh, items in the past, so I'm, I can't, you know, I'm not the factor on, on those, but um, we have four nationwide and a number of, of regional and local providers depending on, on the area that's serving the marketplace. And I think consumers are benefiting from that. Um, and the, con the commission also likes to take this view on wireless that it's not a, a substitute for wireline. And if you look at the numbers and you look at the consumer experience, you know, I'd rather be on the wireless side than the wireline side. I mean, that's, that's, it's not debatable uh, on where consumers want to go and what they expect. Um, they want mobility. They like the features and functions that they're getting from their providers. And they, they want to see new things like 5G develop. They want to see wireless fiber develop. So uh, I'm excited. It's an exciting time to be watching the wireless industry uh, going forward. Uh, and we should, we should applaud that rather than, than take a negative uh, per perspective on it. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to choose the next one. How about yeah. that? Uh, let's go with cybersecurity. Hot topic. It's going to always be important to us. Um, the wireless industry is committed to ensuring the security of wireless products and services. And the FCC has suggested a more active role on cyber issues for 5G and the Internet of Things. In your view, what is the Commission's role in this space, and how do we ensure that carriers remain free to evolve and respond to dynamic threats? Um, I think that's a Commissioner Clyburn question, correct? Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, you know, it's an important now, one. Again, you see why we're separated, right? <laughs> so, look, we're moving to, um, you know, increasingly a, an, an IP uh, environment. The, the, the world, as we know it, is changing. You know, I've been on the, again, I'm the senior citizen for, citizen for real on the commission, um, you know, with seven years under my belt. And, oh, my gosh, I, I've seen just so many uh, changes, particularly when you talk about about you know migrations when you talk about you know possible discontinuances and and, and and the like. So the responsibilities I believe that we have definitely we always need to take a fresh uh, look um, at that. But what is not um, different for us is that we have a responsibility to promote the security and reliability uh, when it comes to uh, you know com you know. Com the communication space and, uh, in terms of you know, these providers. Um, so, you know, reliability when it comes uh, to, um, to all of you, to, to, to carriers, and, um, you know, how we operate, um, you know, these critical infrastructures. Again, it is, uh, it's got to be viewed as not only a partnership, but a seamless uh, type of uh, protection for consumers, meaning it's not all in the FTC's bucket, it's not all in the FCC's uh, uh, you know, a portfolio, but what is necessary from where I sit is that we have a seamless protections. How do we do that um, is uh, the question I think we should continually um, ask ourselves. And to say that we have absolutely no role in this space, I, I think is, is walking away from um, you know, our responsibilities and, and that line or that um, we're supposed to be, you know, the protectors and, and, and promoting security and reliability when it comes to uh, communication services. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I think this Start. is an important one for everybody to answer. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you. All right. Well, I'll take it. Uh, I appreciate the perspective. I start with the first and foremost question, what authority has Congress given to the FCC? That is the law that governs how we operate. Uh, and here, Congress has not spoken and given us new authority. If you look at the legislation that has moved and is being considered in the Congress today, I'm not aware of any that includes any authority for the commission to be involved in this discussion. Lots of Homeland Security, lots of DOD, lots of different agencies are involved, non mention the FCC. So I have a difficulty when we say, well, we have to be involved in this issue. I'm sensitive to cybersecurity. I'm not trying to be ignorant to the needs of protecting consumers. But it, we have to diversify in terms of who does what. And doing the same thing that Homeland Security does, or doing the same thing and putting new burdens on industry uh, that others are looking at, is not make sense for me. Second, it, as, as Meredith highlights quite correctly, it is in the industry's best interest to have the most uh, protected communications with their consumers. Um, without that, 
in a competitive environment that I believe exists, consumers will leave. They'll jump ship if, if the carrier, and we've seen this in the past in multiple different fields where companies have actually closed down, not necessarily in the wireless space, but in other places where they've taken such a hit uh, that it's not been in, it's, it's in their interest to raise the issue and protect their networks. And I think the carriers are well aware of that and are doing the right thing. There are going to be breaches. Let's not kid ourselves. There are going to be security breakdowns. It's happening in everything we do. We see that at the political party level. We see it everything. There are hackers. They're very smart. You do the best you can at the network level to protect the system. But there are going to be problems. Uh, and I don't think the solution is to hammer the companies with an enforcement action from the FCC. Um, so I think uh, security is a critical issue. And I think especially now that we are on the dawn of the Internet of Things with billions of connected devices uh, coming online that it's going to be increasingly critical to address security. But for me, at least, the two key axes here are who and what. Uh, with respect to the who, I think Commissioner O'Reilly pointed out that our authority is relatively circumscribed. And so I tend to be hesitant to think the FCC should take the definitive role here uh, to the exclusion of other agencies and simply proclaim that we do have the expertise here. I don't really think that we do. In addition to that, the what. Uh, one of the things here, I mean, essentially what we're talking about is sort of full stack security. It's not just the physical layer. And it's an exceedingly complex issue. And I'm, I'm not sure that even if we did want to arrogate for ourselves the authority to solve this problem, what exactly we would do. And I tend to think that we should be uh, relatively uh, modest, all of us, to try to figure out this problem. It's not an easy problem to solve for anybody. And I do tend to think that we should let industry take the lead, let them try to figure out what the solutions are for this sort of full stack problem, and work together as opposed to dictating solutions from up on high, which may be outmoded at the very moment we mandate them. So forgive me for taking another bite at the apple, but I just want to make sure that, that I'm clear that I'm not talking about a, an ex exclusive zone here. I am talking about complementary uh, you know, uh, authority. And, um, and so I, all of those are entities, absolutely, and, and more so some than others. Um, um, but you know, for the FCC to, to basically back up and say that we have absolutely no role here, I think, to me, will leave uh, too many of our citizens vulnerable when uh, there might be uncertainty um, by way of uh, authority or otherwise that uh, our, our sister agencies uh, are able to uh, render the protections that um, you know, people uh, expect. Absolutely. And likewise, I'm not saying the FCC should have no role. I do think we do have a potentially consultative role with you know, leading agencies like DHS that might have a strong interest in the issue. And you know, we might have a perspective on you know, networks that uh, they might find appealing. But I think for us to sit in the driver's seat, uh, is, uh, it's a tenuous uh, proposition. I, I stay at the same point. We have the role that only Congress gave us. Uh, and you and I have a slightly different opinion. We've talked we, about it in the past in terms of what the, you know, the, the words on the page can mean. Uh, but you know, there, I'm having difficulty finding a section that says, you know, be engaged, especially in terms of what you know, has the role on cybersecurity in our 5G item uh, that went forward and gave you know, a bureau an extensive role in, this, in setting the, the, the process going forward. I think that's problematic. Uh, and it's not what Congress asked us to do or even told us to do. And that should be what bounds our activities. We think it bodes poorly as well, just because I think that we carriers take it extremely seriously and it's top of mind every day. And we just want to make sure that we're free to evolve in the dynamic environment that we're in. But it is clearly the most important thing, one of the most important things as we move forward into the new networks. Um, okay, let's see. Commissioner Clyburn, you want to go first? Do you want to pick one more? Well, why don't we stay in the zone and go to privacy? I, that's so, you read my mind. I was going to choose it for you, but I no. chose, <laughs> you chose properly. Um, the FTC has expressed some reservations with the FCC's approach on privacy. How important is parity across the internet economy in your mind, and how do we ensure that the regulations for ISPs are balanced with the rules for other internet companies? So I'm going to have my inner, um, how do I want to put it, uh, pageant role and answer the question the way I choose to, as opposed to how you framed it. No, no offense. <laughs> um, look. That's called a pageant role? You know, you know how, you, <laughs> see, now he's going to make me go. I'm going to get I don't know done. if that was a question. We're getting separated again. <laughs> I mean, you, 
if any of you watch five minutes of the question and answer during the pageant, you know very rarely do they answer the question precisely. Is that on The no Bachelor first, or no something? Offense. I'm sorry? Is that on The Bachelor or something? What do we... I, don't, I don't watch The Bachelor. Well, I'm not sure who's here. No, I'm just talking about pageants. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. So look, I'm sorry. I'm so when it, when, it, when it comes to privacy, and, and, and if, if we stay in, um, in line with some of what we talked about with the, the last, um, uh, you know, the last um, section or subject matter, here's my concern, that something will end and we would have a gap by way of, of protection. So the Ninth Circuit has spoken when it comes to this, when it comes to our sister agency, the FTC, that they do not, they were very clear in saying they do not have the authority to regulate common carriers, nor do they have the authority to regulate any of their activities, even if it's not, it's outside, of, those, those activities are outside of the regular uh, common carrier portfolio. If that does not get your attention in terms of there has to be an agency uh, that will uh, fill in the gap, I have no idea um, you know, what will. So you know, from where I sit, uh, when it comes to situations like that, where either the court has made it clear uh, that a, 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 a complementary agency does not have the authority or things may be uh, 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 either overlap or some gray areas, I, my fallback is section uh, 222, uh, uh, where it's very clear in that uh, section of the Com Act um, that the uh, providers must um, comply to, uh, you know, these, uh, to the terms that are so clearly, um, you know, laid out in terms of privacy protections and, and, and the like. And so, you know, that's why um, I am really, um, uh, again, the word of this section um, is, is complimentary that, um, to that really, that I know we have a role to play and we should be uh, mindful that, of that and not leave uh, citizens uh, where the court has been clear or where things may be fuzzy, leave them uh, to their own, um, leave them vulnerable. I, I, I just fundamentally, as, as a regulator and as a person who cares about people, I've got a problem with that. Well, I'm a person who cares about people too, but <laughs> I... Uh, not like I do, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, I'm I care about their wallets as well. Okay. No, but you know, look, I'm not gonna let one, um, I think most people find that decision quite squirrely, and if you were to look at the uh, Supreme Court decisions over the last number of years, the Ninth Circuit certainly does not have a very good track record. I find the decision very tr troubling, but if, if the bigger part, if you're to look at that, it's not necessarily, the, the, you know, it doesn't reaffirm our, de, our desire to, or some desire at the commission to run in and do the broadband privacy. The concern should be, you know, from somebody is that, what about the non-common carrier portion of an edge provider that just happens to pick up a common carrier? So if all of the biggest edge providers, so should we, as the FCC, step in and fill that gap too? No, the Congress hasn't asked us to do so. And think about how, how terrible decisions we'd be regulating edge providers, which Chairman Wheeler told us we don't, edge, we don't regulate edge providers. So, I mean, if that should be the concern from the Ninth Circuit decision, in my opinion, not you know, reaffirm uh, the misguided uh, you know, rush to do broadband privacy when there's been little evidence of any problem. And the, you know, the real control of the information is not on the broadband provider side, but is on the edge provider side. So um, I think this is very problematic going forward. I think this is a pretty complicated issue. Obviously, the FCC teed up 500 different questions about privacy. <laughs> the business practices around it are complex. But I think ultimately, this issue is rather simple. And it is, what is the consumer expectation in the online world? And I think it's fair to say that consumers have a uniform expectation of privacy, that they don't think about the regulatory classification of the internet service provider or the edge provider who is allowing them to do something on the internet. They simply expect uh, certain things to be protected if it's especially sensitive. And for things that aren't so sensitive, they're somewhat more willing to share that information without an opt-in regime. And so that's why I think it's critical for us to apply a level playing field across the board uh, to make sure that we don't inadvertently or advertently warp the online advertising market in a way that ultimately is going to be bad for consumers, both because it doesn't protect their privacy adequately and or uh, because it prevents them from benefiting from some of the innovative offerings that you know, in that service providers or edge providers or others might seek to give them. So I like that answer. So um, we're going to move on to the next question. Um, but it's we're running out of time, so I am going to choose dealer's choice. Oh. Moderator's choice. 
however you want to say that. Um, <laughs> I have got three questions I'm going to ask you. Okay. It's kind of like the lightning round. <clears throat> the first one is, what's your favorite app? <laughs> the second one is, what's your favorite thing about super mobility? Feel free to say this panel. <laughs> um, and the third is mm, French fries or potato wedges. Oh. Oh, my. Oh. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner. Oh. Commissioner Pye. French fries, we're talking about hardball questions. My God, a fr French fries without, I mean, Look that's at, they didn't talk about cargo stuff. shorts, okay? Let's. Man. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. I, I, I think there's a silent majority here that supports cargo shorts, but they're ashamed of coming out publicly and supporting it. I didn't mean to get I know you're out the there, people, in your closets. I didn't somewhere. mean to get on this topic. Yeah, so anyway, I will never no back down. No clapping over there. Yes, so. <laughs> if I ever have a chance to meet Wall Street Journal's uh, Nicole Hong, I will pass on the message that there are many more of us than people think. But anyway, uh, so French fries, uh, the second question was? <laughs> Favorite thing about super mobility? Oh, well, the, the panel without question, but uh, no, I think also I, I had a chance to listen to, to Mark Cuban's oh, keynote, and it's sort of interesting to see how he thinks about things and sort of just how he processes information. I mean, it's like, I think he said he had something like 125 uh, investments any given time, and how he approaches business issues with respect to those investments. It's just an interesting way of, of thinking about things. And uh, the first question was, oh, favorite app. So. Uh, well, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is go on Twitter, as you might expect, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, to make sure that my wireless advisor, Brendan Carr, FCC, hasn't said anything untoward. But um, <laughs> um, here comes the bus <laughs> right over you, there, Brendan. No, I'm just kidding. My, my staff always lives in just terrified horror about what I might, might have tweeted out during the night. Um, With reason. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> It's an unappreciated art. Jeep uh, so, yeah. Pie and John Legend. Yeah. Art. What's, what do they <laughs> exactly. have in common? Um, but my favorite app, I've got to say, and this is very random, is Chipotle. The Chipotle app. I love Chipotle burritos. And th the best thing about it is, like, when you order from the app what? and then you go to the store, there's like this gigantic line going out the door, and I walk right up to the front and I just say, I have an online order. And all these people are like throwing me daggers, like, who is this guy? And they just hand me my bag, and I just walk right out like this international man of mystery. And I'm like, I love it. It's sort of like, how did he get this burrito? He didn't interact with him. He didn't put an order in, but it's just awesome. It's like kind of, I don't know, I love that app. So that's, that would be my answer. All good answers. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very simple man. It's like, yeah, oh my God. black beans in an app, and I'm good to go. So, wow. Yeah. OK, um, sure. Uh, in terms of uh, an app, my favorite app was uh, Realtor.com, but we actually bought a house. So now, that, now I set that aside. I think our, you know, I, I, my app right now is Amazon. Uh, I'm buying a lot of diapers and a lot of subscriptions. <laughs> so that just is our go-to uh, go functionality. Uh, I mean, in terms, uh, uh, I just got in uh, before. This is my first function of the show, so I apologize. I think my best part so far has been my thoughtful colleagues and our lovely hostess. So thank you for there. And I'm a French fry guy, I think. Excellent. Very good to know. Well, I'll do it from the, um, uh, the reverse order. Um, you know, last night, if you caught me at the Pepper Mill uh, restaurant up the street, which I go to every time I come here, don't ask me why. Um, French fries was what I thought about, and then I had an entree somewhere uh, in, in there. So I am a, a, a total French, French fry addict. Uh, my doctor has been on my case about that, but um, uh, we're both losing. If you, if, you, if you look at the waistline, please don't. Um, uh, uh, the second in terms of uh, other than uh, um, this uh, opportunity to exchange, I've got to say the showroom floor in all of its promise uh, in, in, in all of the innovation. I got a chance to go to uh, the entrepreneurial uh, 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 section and you, and you see people really uh, tackling um, you know, real world challenges or, and, and real problems in our communities and really trying to, to be laser beam and focused through technology. I mean, my gosh, it, 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 just, uh, it just makes you upbeat. And I have to think, yeah, I have to say in terms of frequency, um, I am semi-addicted to Twitter. And um, it's been the, the best aggregator for me to not only get news and information in a, in a very uh, you know, consolidated, concise way, but to really reconnect with, because uh, I'm not on the other books or uh, you know, uh, other platforms, um, but I'm keeping in touch and, and, and being reintroduced to people through subject matter. And I just really think that, that um, you know, being, having the opportunity to be as narrow as, or as wide as I want through that particular platform has been a real enriching experience for me. So I have to, uh, uh, you know, I have to say that that's, uh, that's it for me. But of course, you are a 
close second on that second question. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, so guys, um, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thanks for being here in Las Vegas with us at Super Mobility. Um, we may have married, divorced, separated, but French fries have brought us all together. Maybe yes. not have been the last question Howard Buzzkirk would have asked, but you know, I'm not Howard Buzzkirk. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks for being here. We appreciate what you do in your service.